I'm Kathy Albro, and I'm running for the State House in District 104. My name is Kathy Albro, and I am running for the Michigan State House to represent the District of 104 in Northern Michigan. Oh. What does that district encompass? Well, I live in Bel Air in Antrim County, so most, the good thing about the redistricting is it's, at least we have whole townships, but we don't have whole counties. So most of Antrim County, most of Kalkaska County, quite a bit of Grand Traverse, but not the Traverse City area. Almost all of Benzie and most of Manistee and a little bit of Wexford County. So six partial counties in total. Yeah, the redistricting thing has been a bit of a confusion for a lot of Hopefully people. Hopefully it'll be better for all of us, more fair. Outside of the pol politics side of it though, like mm -hmm. who, who are you? Where did you come from? What is your background? Well, first of all, I'm a mother of two, proud mother of two beautiful women and two grandchildren. I've been married to my husband, Rick, for 46 years. Uh, we live mostly in the Grand Rapids area. I was raised mostly in Farmington, a suburb of Detroit, uh, but lived most of our life in Grand Rapids. Uh, then we, we purchased 10 acres in Bel Air 10 years ago, and uh, my husband retired a year ago, and we moved up here permanently into northern Michigan and just love it. Actually, we have a small farm. I haven't been able to do much this summer, but some other farmers are, are growing you know, three about three acres of vegetables. We have hoop, a hoop house and chickens and really enjoying that part of life. But I think I got to this point, I was reflecting on it. Um, I'm the oldest of eight children. Uh, when I was in high school, I think this was kind of a life turning event for me. I worked in a home for abused and neglected children. I was like the big sister of eight and nine year old boys. And um, one time they asked me to drive a child home for the weekend into downtown Detroit area and that was a wake-up call for me. It, had, it was right two years after the 1967 uprising and I remember the smoke billowing you know towards our suburb thinking you know what is this all about? Well when I got there and actually saw the conditions that people were living in I realized it started to all click that you know life is not fair to all of us and we had a pretty comfortable life middle class lifestyle my dad worked for Ford um, and so that that I think that got me started um, on my way thinking about how important it is to treat our children and I decided to be a teacher went to Michigan State uh, was a first grade teacher for several years first in Marlette and then we moved to East Grand Rapids. My husband's a basketball coach, or was. Um, and after a, a while, I uh, opened a child care center. My degree's also in child development. Uh, and then opened other child care centers for businesses that wanted to pr provide on-site child care. Um, so all along I'm thinking, you know, it's so important how we treat our children, even especially the young ones from birth to, to five years old, it's very important. And I wanted to create a model program and we were one of the first to be accredited in the country um, for quality. But what I found was that to provide the best quality childcare, it, it's unaffordable for most parents. Um, if you want to have educated teachers with degrees and small group sizes and an invite, inviting, nurturing environment, um, it, it's expensive. And But all children deserve that if their parents are going to have to work or go to school. And right now we have a, a tremendous child care problem um, throughout the district and throughout the state where it's really affecting our economy considerably and uh, we need to have great quality places for children to, to go that parents can afford. So long story short, um, that experience at the Sarah Fisher home where I started um, 
one of the boys actually uh, was a mass murderer, became a mass murderer. <laughs> wow, good boy. Yeah, in the, uh, he killed his co-workers in, a, in the post office in Detroit. That was many years ago, but you might remember that. Um, so it's important that we make sure our children have a nurturing early childhood and, and childhood um, where they're, they're really respected and every child deserves that, not just children, children of parents who have the means to provide for it. I see the passion behind this, all of that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how we get there. Well, it's not gonna be easy. When I taught in the 80s, Michigan was ranked in the top 10 for public schools. Now we're 40th this year, and that's deplorable. I mean, we need to, we need to look at why that happened. Um, funding is one, and, and the way that the funding is used is one reason, but it's also the disrespect I think that teachers are get over the years. I think it's gone downhill, and not as many very qualified people are going into the profession. Um, our schools of education are dwindling in the state, and we need to, to work really hard to get that back up to par where the best and the brightest are our teachers. And that's not gonna happen unless we, we pay them more, we give them more respect and- More and resources. More resources to do their job. I, I spent 12 years working around the country in very low wealth community schools, um, helping teachers develop curriculum that in, was engaging to their students. And um, what I found was that those children who needed the most were getting the least. Teachers were having to buy their own materials. And I remember going into classrooms where kids were using pencils, like two inch pencils to write with because their teachers couldn't afford to spend any more money sure. on materials. And that's wrong, it's just wrong. That's still happening. It is. Yeah. It is. Yes. And unless you actually go into those schools, you don't realize the discrepancy that, and those children need so much more. When you're growing up in poverty, there's already trauma in your life. If you're not eating well, or you're not sleeping well, or there's, you know, emotional um, problems in the home that child can't learn to their potential. So, I mean, that's, how we treat our children is so important. I agree with that. You know, when you said 1967, the uprising down there, my grandfather was uh, the fire chief of Rouge Fire Department. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And yeah. shortly after all of that, packed up the family and moved up here. Mm. Uh, they, had a, they had a place in Kalkaska for years that they used as a hunting camp, and they had actually thought about um, setting up a business up there of some sorts, but then found the NSD, so that's a whole nother story, but they had some businesses here. That's mm -hmm. why I'm here, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. yeah, interesting. I know, it's interesting how life back. changes yeah. <laughs> with one thing, but. Yeah, and I'm sure our stories would be very similar in that. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, there are a couple of things that I wanted to kind of bookend this with, but I think you've answered most of them, but to kind of end this, little discussion here why should why should I get your vote well I I ran for Congress in 2018 in the Grand Rapids area where we were living I didn't win but I loved I really loved getting out there and meeting people and hearing their stories and trying to figure out you know I I think I think I think deeply about things and I I like to think about well how could that life be improved what are the root causes for why they're living like that and what what things could we do now to change that for them and for others and the first thing we need to do is start working together i think there's too much divisiveness in our neighborhoods in our state in our country and we're not going to solve these problems these challenges unless we can start working together because even if the Democrats take control um, this time, if the Republicans come in two years and are in control again, you know, things will change. We need to work together so that we can work on long-term solutions rather than just look at the two years that you're gonna be in, you know, in power and 
move on. That's not working, and it's it's very expensive too to do it. Yeah. Yeah, and honestly, no matter your political affiliation, I think that's the right way to go for both parties. Exactly. Or whether you are an independent, I actually am meeting a lot of people in this district who are telling me they vote for the person, and I'm so happy to hear that because we share a lot of the same values, and that's how we should be choosing the people we vote for, is if they're going to work for our values. I agree with that. Thank you. Thank you, James. Awesome. Thanks.